guys and welcome back to another episode of Fossil Friday. So in today's video we're going to be looking a bit more about ammonite morphology but this time a little bit more in depth. So I've got some specimens um, to show you guys today that kind of let us see inside the ammonites. So I'll show you one of the cooler ones. So here we have an ammonite of the species Harposerus. So you can see it here. Now the cool thing about this one is it's kind of been eroded and weathered on the sea floor so much so that you can actually see the chambers exposed here. So we also have the suture lines, so that's going around the outer well here. You can kind of see them, they almost look like little jigsaws or leaves. And then beneath the suture lines you can actually see the septum that are dividing the chambers here. So it just kind of gives you an idea a bit about how these creatures actually looked on the inside. So I love that we can see the chambers. So with this specimen I'm just going to give it a little bit of a clean. So I think it's a bit delicate just because it has obviously been through the walls a little bit. So we're going to just wash it in some like lukewarm water and just very gently brush it so I can try and get any excess dust or matrix out of the detail. And then I'm just going to put a thin coat of powder just to preserve it because I think it's a really excellent piece to kind of show and educate on the morphology of an ammonite not just kind of the outer ribs so I like that we kind of get a glimpse inside now suture lines are pretty cool um, but they are actually beneath the ribbing so when you find different ammonite species they have they vary so drastically. I'm sure if you've been watching my channel for a while, just the ammonites that I found, I mean, they they vary drastically. So you've got all different types of ribbing, you've got all different types of suture lines, and kind of working out like the order of things is a little bit complicated. So if we look at this specimen here, so this is just a chunk, but it's a lovely chunk that shows the suture lines beautifully. And then on the inner whirl here, we actually can see the indentation of the ribs as well. So you can kind of see the form of those and then the suture lines that sit beneath them so they're really complicated structures and they kind of define the def um they divide like the shell and the septum um but they're they're just pretty amazing and like you see how complicated they are on like the outer well here like in my head surely it didn't have that many chambers so why were there so many of them? So if any of you are like experts on ammonites and suture lines you know just comment down below some wisdom about them because I'd love to read it because they are just they're fabulous things and like some of these specimens have just I mean like look at this one look at the detail etched into this so they're really complicated structures and I'm just trying to understand like I always had in my head that they that the so you've got the ribs and then below the ribs these suture lines would actually divide the chambers so the different like different wiggly lines but I'm now thinking maybe I've got the wrong idea. So I'm going to do a little bit of research and then come back to you. <laughs> yeah, I did just double check myself and it is the case. So you've got chambers that are divided by septum, which are the walls. So you, that kind of make the chambers like we saw in the first specimen here. So these l bits here spaced, you can kind of see those little chunks there. They are the septum and now the suture lines are actually the chamber walls. So that top part to those, you know, dividing chambers and it's what uh, joins the kind of shell to the chamber. So the suture lines are right beneath the ribs and that's why you get quite complicated ones because this is actually what divides um, the outer shell and the chambers. So this is almost like the roof of the chambers. So that's why you get so such complicated suture lines. So I was getting a bit confused because I was thinking individually, like each of these lines was a dividing chamber. And then I thought, that's a bit of a crazy amount of chambers going on in this ammonite, but that's not the case. So that's kind of the roofing structure. And then you've got the two septum and that divides each of the chambers. And the ammonites are made up of obviously many chambers going around. So complicated creatures, but very cool to try and, you know, kind of get an insight into the inside of these fossils um, because you actually get an idea of the inner workings of the ammonite. So I thought that'd be quite cool to share. Okay, so we're now going to plonk those specimens into the tub of water. So I'll adjust the view so you can watch me do it. And hopefully they're not too dirty because then I want them to dry so we can put a little bit of paraloid on them. Okay, so now I'm going to move the specimens into the bowl here so we can give them a bit of a rinse. But I'll just give you a nice close up of them all beforehand just in case they all fall apart. I never want to jinx it, but we've got this lovely one here. So you can see the beautiful kind of internal structure of the ammonite. So I don't actually, I think this one's bigger than my water. Oh, would you look at that? It doesn't actually submerge itself. So I am going to flip that one over just so the ammonite can actually get a bit of cleaning 
And then I'm gonna do the same with these ones. So you've got the beautiful suture lines on this specimen here. And they've actually been like etched in, so you can really see the detail of this species. So again, this is a just a larger chunk of a Harposerus ammonite. So we can really analyze those structures and they are glorious. I mean, they are so beautiful to look at. So even though it's only a chunk, it's such a beautiful chunk. That one's quite mucky. And then the last one is this gorgeous piece. I mean, the detail on those suture lines. And I love that you can kind of see the ribbing on the inner whorl here. It just gives you an idea of kind of the structure of the ammonite. So cool. And this one doesn't look too dirty, but we'll just, oh, famous last words. That was, that was very dirty. So I'm now just gonna give these a scrub and then take them out and let them dry for a bit. Oh, you can see when some bits of the rock are like attached by just mud. So you can see it crumbling my hands here. So they need a, a good scrub and hopefully they'll stay in one piece. And then we'll put some paraloid on them. I think I sing it again, she had no second drop, 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 that's like what? These took a lot longer to clean than I thought they would because they were so much dirtier. So it took quite a few bowls of water and then I had to let them dry and I gave them a really good scrub. So they are now officially ready for a coat of Paraloid. So this is what they look like nice and clean. They pretty much look the same. They just needed such a, like the, the amount you probably saw, like so much um, dirt was coming off them. So hopefully I got the worst of it off now. So that's what they, they look like before so i'm just going to put a very thin coat on because i think they look beautiful as they are i just think it will help enhance them ever so slightly so i'm just going to paint it over This is what they look like with a coat of Paraloid on them and as you can see it just really helps to kind of bring out the detailing. So I think this specimen here really shows nicely the kind of septum walls there and you can see the chambers in between. It's really nice to kind of be able to see like partially like cut through the ammonite. So you can see the chambers and then you can see a little bit of the ribs and then you can see lots of the suture lines going around the outer world and then you've still got the center there and then there's a little fragment there which miraculously hasn't broken off at all so i just think that's such a nice piece and it really just gives you a bit of insight about what what these creatures look like from the inside out like how cool is that and then we've got these beautiful ones and i mean look at the suture lines on this one the detail is just incredible like how amazing is that and it's completely like etched in like it just it, it looks like really complicated almost like ferns or something like that and it just for me i kind of just see the overlaps between like the suture lines and like other other bits in nature which i just think is really cool i mean look at that like the more you look at it the more detail that comes out i just think it's amazing how 3d it is and then this one is just beautiful. You can really see the suture pattern in this specimen. It's so cool to see. And like, look how many there are. And they're all identical, like on this specimen. Just amazing to look at. But look at them go.
It's almost like a really intricate jigsaw. They just fit together perfectly. And then you've got the ribs as well. Amazing. So that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I did have to add on another accessory because the weather in England at the moment, it is so cold and it is pouring with rain. Like the light has disappeared as well. Like, would you believe it? it's literally 5 p.m. for me and it, the light is already just dimming and disappearing. It's yeah, autumn is definitely here, but it kind of, in a way I, I love autumn, but I'm also like, oh, here comes the rain and the cold, but so be it. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. Also, I don't know if you can see it, but I, I do have an ammonite belt on, which is very, very jazzy. So this was a vintage cloak clasp that I found. So it kind of connected a cloak up here and I turned it into a belt. And now I just think it just, it looks awesome with like my boiler suit. I'm kind of looking like a bit of a weird pilot, like with a very unusual headband, but we're going with it. My ears are nice and warm, which is the main thing. But I hope you enjoyed today's video where we prepped these beautiful harposeruses. I mean, look how they turned out. I really hope the lighting is okay for you guys. But l just the detail in these specimens. Like, I love that you can actually see the chambers. So, you, like, in this piece, like, some, some people might look at it and be like, oh, that's not a very nice perfect ammonite and in a way it's not but it's it, in a way it is because you can actually see like into the ammonite you've got the chambers the suture lines the ribs whereas if it was just perfect you wouldn't be able to see all that so i kind of love that it's it's naturally almost like partially sliced in half which i think is just so cool and then these pieces i know i'm just re-showing you but i'm sure you guys will approve my oh god they're just so cool like they are the most beautiful chunks I've ever seen and the suture lines I'm just I think they're just lovely examples and so I thought this video kind of could be a bit of like an educational piece but also a fun piece for me because I'm prepping them anyway um so yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Fossil Friday please like and subscribe if you did I'll link my other social media down below if you'd like to follow me on there I do have an Instagram and a Twitter I would never really use my Twitter but I'm gonna try and change that but um if you'd like to follow me on there please do so but um yeah I hope you're all doing well and hopefully I'll see you next week thanks for watching